Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dragon Age Inquisition Ultimate Character Build. Today, we have finally reached our next rogue. Stay tuned to find out who it is and the best setup for it. I'll catch you guys in a second. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so today's rogue of choice is the hunter. We are going to be looking at his abilities, passives and actives, accessories, armor, the whole nine yard. Let's get right into it. First things first, let's look at the active active skills that I do have unlocked already. I'm not using all of these. I will show you which ones we are using as well as I will explain them once we go into the breakdown of the active and passive abilities. So I have unlocked the explosive shots, fallback plan, full draw, leaping shot, spike trap, and throwing blade. All these are unlocked. Um, they all actually have a purpose. I've actually used all of these skills, um, I think within like the first 10, I wanna say the first 10 levels, uh, fallback plan, explosive shot, tra spike trap, and throwing blades was my go-to. And then uh, unlocking full draw, and uh, actually, I think Leapy Shot wasn't in there at first, but Full Draw and Leapy Shot, I did replace those for, uh, or I replaced Fallback Plan and uh, Spike Trap and Thorn, uh, no, just Fallback Plan and Spike Trap for Full Draw and Leapy Shot. But anywho, let's get right into it. Going down trapping, Explosive Shot, you're gonna get that right out of the back, guys. Uh, you fire a powerful shot that explodes on impact, damaging enemies around the target if you hit it with. This is gonna do 150 weapon damage. Impact range is four meters, so four meters around the initial impact is what's also gonna be taking initial damage. Got a cooldown of 12 seconds and it costs 35 mana. I did not upgrade this. Um, I chose not to upgrade it to get um, full draw, but in the process of making this video and, and using different skills and different possibilities, I did notice that chain reaction is really good. Um, so if you guys don't want to go with full draw, definitely pick this up. You will not miss full draw at all. Passive, prayer of the storm. When your stamina is exhausted, you fight even harder, lashing out with fury to win the fight. You get a damage bonus of 10% and a low stamina threshold is 50%. And additional plus three on constitution there. But there for health, you definitely gonna need it with a rogue. We all know Rogue's health pool is terrible. Terrible. Spike Trap, an awesome, awesome, awesome active skill. This is one of those skills I did use at the very beginning. Uh, you set a trap that when an enemy approaches, detonates and flings enemies into the air. You do 500 weapon damage, uh, cooldown timer 8 seconds, and it costs 20 stamina. And then Shrapnel, the upgrade there. Spike Trap leaves your enemies bleeding for several seconds. Uh, bleed duration 10 seconds this affects stacks um i only did this i only did the upgrade because of when i was using it with with my lower level hunter uh but i would you could not purchase the shrapnel upgrade and then actually just use that ability point to get the chain reaction uh i would actually say that's probably a better bet um, this is currently how I have it set up, but either oil will work for you. Uh, I would say use it for chain reaction versus for shrapnel uh, due to the fact that we do get rid of shrapnel later on down the line. Throat cutter, second passive here. A wound enemy is the perfect target. Your attacks are even deadlier against targets that are close to death already. Damage bonus is 2% extra damage for each 10% missing health. And that's for the enemy, not yourself. So it's the enemy's missing health, not your missing health, because you're going to do that damage bonus. You also get a plus three on dexterity there. On the razor's edge, another pass up here. You do more damage to enemies closer to you. This really works really well with uh, spike traps or leaping shot. Those two work really well, because especially spike trap, you're going to, if you run into a crowded area, use spike trap, you can do a lot. And if you allow enemy to close on anything, use uh, Leaping Shot. It's also going to be very well. You're going to get a damage bonus of 25%. A distance of 10 meters and then a plus three cunning. Moving on to the next passive. Attacking an enemy from behind slows them for a short time. Not the best of passives. I'm not going to go over it. It is not really 
that important to his build, but it was important to get to the rest of the skills, so that's why it's there, obviously. Strafing shot, you really can't go wrong with strafing shot for the uh, archer or the hunter. It's it's huge. It helps you actually dodge arrows from other incoming archers. Uh, you move faster while firing without sacrificing accuracy. You get a speed bonus of 100% and then a plus 3 on a dexterity. Pin cushion, awesome here. This is this is very strong passive if you ask me. Uh, if the first arrow doesn't kill them, the tenth mark, each consecutive hit with the bow attack does progressively more damage to the target. You get a 5% damage bonus for 10 seconds. This stacks, so he, it's like 5, 10, 50, 20, obviously, like I said. It does stack, so each attack you do to one person becomes progressively stronger. So those big guys tend to see these numbers rise quite a bit, quite a bit. And then you also get a plus 3 on dexterity there. Fighting dirty, all of your sudden and poison effects last longer as you make more potent toxic and uglier wounds. Uh, again, not one of the biggest ones. Uh, I don't really sunder or poison these guys. You you can choose it if you want. You can go with these guys over here. Um, but again, I didn't choose it. It's just one of those passes where I needed to get to uh, throwing blades. And speaking of throwing blades, you have a group of knives at all nearby targets, ripping through their armor and leaving it sunder. So. I guess here, but it's again, I didn't really notice a big difference. Uh, you hit four times doing 180% damage. These numbers do very uh, last for eight seconds, cool down time for 12 seconds, and it costs 50 mana. Now, you're definitely, 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 definitely gonna want to upgrade this here to precision targeting. And what precision targeting does for you is the less enemies around you, the more of these knives hit one enemy and they then stack 25%. Um, so if you have like one enemy, you have four hits, they're gonna give you a bonus of 25 extra damage uh, on top of the 180 that's already doing. It does massive damage, guys, massive damage. On to survival, fallback plan. Again, very useful at the very beginning stages of your uh, hunter, especially if you don't have a bow that's giving you health back on hit or health back on kill. Fallback plan is beautiful. Uh, I used it um, in the earlier stages, like I said. You know, I, I throw it down, engage in combat. If I see myself in close to death, I activate that fallback plan and regain all my health. Uh, last 15 seconds, once deployed, then it has a cooldown time of 24 seconds. It costs 35 stamina. You do have the ability to upgrade it to bait and switch to give you just a five second duration bonus. But I did not see that really useful nor needed, so I did not upgrade it. I would recommend you guys not to, but if you guys want to try it out, you definitely can. Next pass up here, going down a survival tree. First blood, you learn to pick apart enemies that are still unwounded and unworried. You do more damage to enemies that are only lightly injured. So enemies that health is above the 80% mark, you're gonna be doing additional 15% damage on top of any skill or basic attack that you use. So you can't really go wrong with that there. Leaping Shot, everybody knows Leaping Shot. It is amazing, active. You dive out of trouble and fire a hell of arrows at the enemies that were trying to close with you. Uh, so again, this is really one of those things you use when an enemy closes. You can use it anytime really, but I really use it. You guys will see in the gameplay. I really only use it when it's come time to uh, escape danger or uh, get away from enemies that are trying to close on me. Uh, you shoot 12 projectiles doing 50% weapon damage. Cooldown time 12 seconds and it costs 35 stamina. You're going to want to go ahead and upgrade to rolling draw. And what this does for you is once you use a leaping shot, your next attack will also get an additional 200% damage. So if you really stack this with like a uh, full draw, man, full draw is amazing. It's going to be killer. It's going to be killer. Moving on to the next passive. Second win, where your stamina is low, it regenerates increase significantly. So anytime your stamina is below 50%, you're gonna increase your stamina regeneration rate to 50%, and you get a plus three on dexterity there. Bloody parry, again, another good passive, you ask me. Your strikes cut deeper into any foes whose current health is lower than yours. So anybody health that's lower than yours, you're gonna do uh, additional 10% damage. Uh, that was a hard one when I chose either between Bloody Prey, uh, prey or gas, Gaps in the Armor. Uh, gaps in the Armor just allows your attacks to 
penetrate their armor 25%, but I figured that just hitting period enemies, enemies that have lower health than me uh, is a little bit more useful, I would say, than kind of bypassing armor, if you ask me. On to the next passive, Tricks of the Trade. You help the team make the most of its ability, increase the damage or duration of all status effects anyone in the party applies. You get a 10% bonus damage to that, and then you also get a 10% duration bonus to that. Evasion, they can't hit what they can't see. Your deceptive fighting style gives you a chance to dodge enemy attacks, taking no damage. Um, it's only got a 10% chance, uh, but any little bit helps the rogues. As you guys know, uh, the rogues health pool is not that big. So this passive does help quite a bit. Um, you don't really notice it, but it's there. It's active, you know, at 10%. One out of every 10 shots is going to activate. So it's a plus there. And then on to the big daddy itself, full draw. It takes a moment to line up the perfect shot, but it pays off with a devastating hit that bites even deeper against enemies who aren't injured yet. So this weapon, oh, this active, I'm sorry, this active does 800% weapon damage, and then it does 800% at full health. So if you are at full health, or no, I'm sorry, if the enemy is at full health, you're gonna do an 800% extra, so that's gonna be 16%, 1600%. You got a cooldown of eight seconds that it's cost 50 stamina you can go with stunning shot the upgrade i did not i did not really see this useful nor did i really care about it sleep duration just 20 seconds so if you hit somebody with full draw they go to sleep for 20 seconds so there you guys have it you have my actors and my passives let's go ahead and look at the uh bow i'm using currently i'm rocking out with this bow um I was just testing it out in the process of this. I only chose this bow because uh, give me 1% skill on hits. Uh, but the bow that I'm usually running with is going to be the Lyrium Reinforced Longbow. Does 171 damage uh, base, 25 cold damage due to my Superb Frost Ruin. And I was only using that to get the um, challenge for Frost Kills or Cold Kills. Does 13% armor penetration, 34 dexterity plus there, and then targets explode for 100% weapon damage on kill, which is very useful. I also sometimes go back between this and Bow of the Dragon. Uh, let you guys look at that real quick. It's also a pretty good one. I get a 8% heal back on kill. No hackons yet, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Going to the armor. Using a Drake scale, 184. I do not have anything on it. As far as medium armors, medium arms or legs, I should probably put something on it. Uh, I'll probably put it on it for the gameplay. Um, in case you guys do not know how to get the Drake scale for the Archer, you need to get a million points with the Archer class, or I should say the Rogue class, um, and that will unlock you a free chest for a Drake scale. And then going on to my accessories. Uh, belt of melee defense, just 2% there. I do not have an enhanced one. Oh, I do have one. Let's throw it on real quick. 5% new defense, just to place those guys who do close it on me. Nothing too special with that there. Rings, I believe is Leaping Shot, and I do not know what the other one is. Uh, leaping Shot, it may actually be both, I'll actually tell the truth. Uh, just increases ability damage by 30%. Uh, let me check, I don't, I believe it's, oh no, it is Thorn Blades as well. Increase ability by 30% as well for Thorn Blades. So enhance Thorn Blades ring and then an enhanced Sleeping Shot ring. And then for um, my amulets, I'm rocking out with the Stamina Amulet. Just gives me plus 10 max stamina, but I'm actually going to change this to the Amulet of Accord. It takes a little bit less aggro. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I mean, I went through that pretty quickly, but there's my active, there's my passives. It is my armor, weapons, and accessories. So let's get right into some gameplay. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are in the game. Wave five, gonna be going up against the 10th fire commander. Looks like, I believe. If I'm correct, my memory serves me correct, I believe, in the 10th fire commander. Here we go. So mainly what I'm going to be basically using here is going to be my basic attack 
I'm using some uh, full draw on some of these little guys. Pretty much gonna be spamming everything. The only one that I, the only skill I'm gonna be oh, I think he's coming up. Uh, the only one I'm gonna be using uh, special wise will be um uh, oh. Help there is going to be my um leaping shot is the only one I'm gonna be using special. The only one, so everything else is gonna be pretty much spamming it as it as it comes available. He's done. I'm gonna stay out of the main fight, it's gonna kind of hang in the back. Pretty much play like a support player if you really want to look at it. Yeah, a support player, really. Get Archie's out of here. Get Archie behind me. Give me a press of good damage. Let me get back up there. Oh, how they say? That's not right. He back there. I don't know how he got me. I should have jumped over his hip, but oh well. I didn't. Who cares? What the fuck? Throwing blades. Somebody's running up on me. I wasn't running up on me, but. Alright. I like to use long shot here, but okay. Oh no. What I get for playing dangerously close with the health. Should be able to get me up here. Get up. Leaking shots. Out of trouble there. So we got two guys left. Really quick game there. Did I get him? Got him. Got him. Full draw is a beast, guys. The beast. Especially if you get him when they have full health. Full draw puts him work. There we go. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is, in my opinion, the best way to use the Hunter. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Using this Hunter was not that easy. It was not that easy at all. I know using the Archer is going to be the same way. Um, again, to be honest, not looking forward to using the Archer either. Uh, but I will do my best, guys, to bring you guys the best video, best class that I can with those two guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, like I said, that was not an easy build for me. Uh, the build was easy. The gameplay was not that easy. Um, the, the hunter, I didn't did not have the best of time using. It did take me quite a bit of time to uh, find the best build, the best setup for that guy. Um, but I think I found it. Give it a try. Use that out. Uh, again, you can play around with those stats. You can play around with the accessories, play around with those skills if you guys want to, but this is again what I believe to be the best ultimate build for the Hunter. It's your boy Nuba Hardier. Nubin it up, Nubin out, peace. I will catch you guys in the next Dragon Age Ultimate Character Build video.